and welcome to South Asia Chat, a podcast series brought to you by the Institute of South Asian Studies at the National University of Singapore. India has been at the forefront of supplying the COVID-19 vaccines and has so far sent out over 5.6 million doses to 17 countries, including its immediate neighbors, as part of an international grant. Another 10 million doses will be made available commercially. Will this vaccine Maitri or Vaccine Friendship Initiative help India strengthen its relationship with its neighbours? And is China now playing catch-up in vaccine diplomacy? To tell us more on this, we have with us Dr. Karthik Nachipan, a research fellow at ISAS whose area of focus includes public health. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. India has been at the forefront of manufacturing the COVID-19 vaccines with Serum Institute of India being the world's largest producer. Some people have said that without India, there won't be enough vaccines to save the world. How do you think this capability bolsters India's image globally? I think it's important to realize that um, this capability that India has uh, has been something that's been long in the making. Um, India's comparative advantage uh, in the generic medicines, medical supplies, and vaccines uh, was driven by necessity. Um, if they did not produce these medicines themselves, then the Indian public will not have access to them. Uh, but over time, as production grew, uh, India built a niche in this area. Uh, and and this is, so this is a comparative advantage and a capability that India has fought to defend and protect when other developed countries have tried to secure rights to drugs and other medicines. Uh, now, coming to what's happening now, uh, India is the third largest producer of pharmaceuticals in the world. Um, India supplies about 20% of the generic drugs. Uh, and these are drugs that are no longer under patent and are open to any company to produce and sell. Um, and I think it was, it was the absence of product patents um, in pharmaceuticals from 1972 to 2005, uh, combined with foreign investment restrictions in the 1970s and 80s that led to the development of this um, industry in India that produces uh, different kinds of medicines, supplies, and vaccines. Uh, and, and, and India is also the major supplier of medicines and vaccines to countries in the global south. This uh, led the a humanitarian organization, the, the, the Médecins Sans Frontières, to dub India as the pharmacy to the, to the developing world. Um, and this is clearly the case also in vaccines. Now, while the largest vaccine manufacturers in India you know, um, are GSK, Sanofi, Merck, and Pfizer, uh, the India Serum Institute is still the largest vaccine producer by volume. I think the, the Pune-based company makes, makes, about a, makes about 2 billion doses a year. Um, you know, 80% of which are exported, uh, and India is now also the also UNIFA, UNICEF's largest vaccine supplier. Um, so, I, I think India has been looking at this issue as as something that's in its national interest, something that's in its development interests, and something that its large population needs um, to protect their own public health, um, and. And that comparative advantage and capability has over time um, has, has over time increased India's soft power uh, and its image as well. So I wouldn't say that it's largely driven by image or perception concerns. It's 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 driven by more practical issues, which now gives India some soft power that it can use for diplomatic benefit. The country has embarked on, vac on a vaccine Maitri program wherein it is shipping free doses to many countries including Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, the Maldives, to name a few. With China's growing dominance in the region over the past decade, do you think this initiative will help strengthen India's relationship with its neighbours, which has been somewhat strained in recent times? Well, shipping vaccines to these countries... Um, particularly the neighbors, uh, will not worsen relations, right? Um, I think, in fact, it may actually reset ties uh, with states like Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh, with whom India has had some recent frictions. Um, will it strengthen relations? I, I think that depends 
on how and with what India follows up these vaccines with and whether India's own approach to these countries changes over the next you know, year or so. Um, I think vaccines will not make existing problems go away or change their entire demeanor towards India. Um, whatever the, the, those issues may be, um, whether it's the citizenship issue in Bangladesh, uh, ports in Sri Lanka, or the border dispute in Nepal, and the vaccines may give them a pause, but not rid them altogether. Uh, I, I think the interesting aspect here with respect to vaccine Maitri um, is the public diplomacy around it. Uh, you see the MEA, uh, you see the external affairs minister, uh, the Indian media, and, and, and a lot of other parts of Indian civil society um, publicizing these vaccine shipments under this campaign. And, and this is something, and, and, and I think this is uh, unprecedented. Uh, now, I'm not sure whether that's uh, this public, dis the levels of public diplomacy you see is a message intended for countries in South Asia, uh, domestic audiences in China, uh, or domestic audiences in India. But I think the government is hoping to somehow uh, cash in on this health di diplomacy. It just remains to be seen how. There is competition between India and China on sending out vaccines. While some allies like Pakistan have bought the Sinovac, others like Brazil and Cambodia have opted for the Indian vac dose. How do you view this development? Is it a small win for India or will China try to counter this? Uh, so I think it's natural for countries that lack the vaccine to seek supplies from countries that have it or are producing it. Uh, so countries friendly to India will look to it for supplies, uh, and likewise with China. Um, now some countries like Brazil have turned to India because there um, are serious doubts around the Chinese vaccine and processes leading up to that vaccine. Um, so it makes sense to diversify a vaccine source. Now, whether this vaccine diplomacy matters or adds to the competitive balance between China and India, again, remains to be seen. Um, I'm not sure if vaccines, though they are important right now, um, will change the power balance in South Asia or change the dynamics and jockeying around how China and India work with countries to advance their own interests. Uh, I think the other issue we need to be aware of here in terms of the pandemic is that the cases across South Asia, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Bhutan, have not been that high. Uh, compared to uh, the other regions and country. Now, South Asia has about, around 12 million cases and around 200,000 deaths, with India accounting for more than 10 million cases and around 160,000 deaths. Uh, so India is a big chunk of what's been happening with respect to the pandemic uh, in South Asia. Now, it, it's likely that what we are seeing, if you look at the case numbers, may not be entirely accurate with testing gaps, um, but even then, the numbers in South Asia have been considerably low compared to other regions. So what, with, what that means is, is, is that the vaccines alone may not fundamentally shape the geopolitics of the region at this juncture or dictate how other countries respond to vaccine contributions, uh, given how the pandemic itself has played itself out in the region. Some analysts believe that the gains for India through vaccine diplomacy will be small, while others describe it as India's moment. Where would you stand? What follow-up action will India need to take to sustain this goodwill effort? Again, I think we need to give it time to see what happens with the pandemic, how other South Asian countries respond to it through vaccines and other public health efforts. Um, and I think it's also a question of how the multilateral vaccine facility, um, COVAX, uh, and, on, and how that gets going, how it gets operationalized, um, which will also have an impact uh, as the global supply of vaccines um, increase. You know, I think the answer to this question so um, partly depends on events and how the pandemic reorients uh, or changes the domestic politics in these countries that could either benefit or hurt in there. Um, I think we also need to remember that how the vaccine is administered and delivered in these countries 
uh, will also affect and shape the perceptions uh, around the, the, the Indian vaccine. So while we are all focused on the shipping of these vaccines, uh, it, 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 it is important to place them in, in, in the context of pandemic management in these countries and whether those efforts are also successful. Um, has India earned some goodwill? Yes, undeniably so. But is that a substitute um, for a strategy that advances India's interests? No. And, and, and that strategy must include other levers um, like financing, loans, um, and different kinds of assistance um, that will protect India's interests and advance uh, the other country's own interests as well. Finally, looking domestically, India has rolled out an extensive inoculation program over the coming months. What do you think will be some of the challenges that this program could face? The immunization program uh, or, or effort in India um, is an epic challenge. Um, I think given the size and scale of this program um, and given India's needs, um, every aspect of it is going to be a challenge. Uh, India now has plenty of shots, uh, but a shortage of people willing to take them. Um, so as India rolls out what seems to be the world's biggest inoculation program, uh, some healthcare and other frontline workers are, are hesitating because of safety concerns over a vaccine um, that is yet to complete phase three trials, which is the Covaxin. Um, while vaccine hesitancy has surfaced in places like Japan uh, and Brazil, uh, and China's candidates, vaccine candidates, have also faced questions over, over the data. I think the scale of the problem in India is by far the largest. Uh, given doubts around Covaxin, uh, trust is gonna be a huge challenge. Um, and so it's gonna be important to build trust among people. Um, for that, the government must come out with more data, um, evidence of the trials, and encourage free and fair discussions uh, among scientists and other um, public health officials on the vaccine. Uh, resources is another challenge. Is there enough personnel to administer these vaccines? Um, and the government wants to have at least 300 million done by July 2021. Uh, so that's a tall, tall order. Um, and at a time when the health system is itself stretched by COVID-19 and other diseases, where will the staff and the personnel come from to, uh, for this max vaccination effort? Money is another constraint. Uh, the government has allocated more funding for health in the 2021 budget, including more for vaccinations. So that's a positive sign. Uh, but again, how is that going to be rolled out? And how effectively will the government work with all the states in this effort? Uh, communication is a big challenge. Um, there's a lot of rumors and disinformation around these vaccines, which will affect the administration and intake of the vaccine. Um, some political leaders themselves have voiced doubts uh, around the vaccine, which will likely deter people from taking it. Uh, and claims around vaccine efficacy must be addressed by the government to ensure mass use. So there are a number of different challenges, uh, including personnel, money, resources, uh, communications. And does India have adequate capacity, uh, given that health as a state and a uh, central subject to roll this out. So again, remains to be seen. You were listening to South Asia Chat. To learn more about our work, visit us at isas.nus.edu.sg.